Tonight on Y News, the Philippines vows to support the proposal seeking to ban foreign waste imports at the 34th ASEAN Summit in Bangkok, Thailand. Former Foreign Affairs Secretary Albert Del Rosario barred from entering Hong Kong. Foreign Affairs Secretary Teodoro Loxin Jr. opposes suggestion of some Chinese and Filipino officials to conduct a joint probe into the Recto Bank incident. Dumaga tribes living near the Angat Dam lament the effects of the rapidly declining water level. And United Nations bodies call for a global action to clean space debris. Good evening. Environmental activists from across Southeast Asia are urging governments to present a united front against a surge of plastic and electronic waste imports that are turning the regions into the world's dump site. Kath Dumaraos will tell us why. In Manila's downtown marketplace, thin single-use plastic bags are a common sight, used to package fruits, vegetables, and fresh meat. They are easy to use and easy to discard. Environmental groups called for Southeast Asian countries to ban waste imports from developed countries to help tackle a plastic pollution crisis as regional leaders meet this week in Bangkok. Southeast Asia has seen a staggering spike in imports of plastic and electronic waste from developed countries after the world's top recycler China banned imports causing millions of tons of trash to be diverted to less regulated countries. But environmentalists in the Philippines have struggled to reduce the amount of plastic waste Filipinos produce. Naman talagang kami paggagamitan kung hindi plastic lang. Kaya mahalaga din sa amin ang plastic. Noon, hindi uso ang plastic. Papel pa lang ang ginagamit. Eh ngayon, wala kami magawa. Wala tayong magagamit na lalagyan. Unang-una ang mamimili, hindi sila nagdadala ng sarili nilang bayong. Ngayon, puro plastic ang ginagamit. Importante talaga yan sa amin dito, plastic. Kasi kung wala kang plastic, wala kayo babalot siya sa mga karne mo. 100 pieces of medium-sized plastic bags only cost 18 pesos and vendors can usually use 300 plastic bags on a good business day. Cities in the metro like Makati, Quezon City, Pasig, Muntinlupa, Las Piñas, and Pasay have already implemented a plastic ban. Greenpeace Philippines Country Director Lea Guerrero says the single-use plastic problem have been an ongoing issue in the Philippines, mostly due to the lack of initiatives to provide people alternative ways of packing their items. We think that um, that, that system um, is a thing that we need to crack um, if you want to reduce single-use plastic use um, in a country. Um, so how do you do that? Um, for us, it's um, policies. Um, giving regulations for the use of single-use plastics. The leaders of Indonesia, the Philippines, Vietnam, and Thailand, four of the world's top marine plastic polluters after China, are attending the ASEAN or Association of Southeast Asian Nations meeting. The environmental group Ocean Conservancy and the McKinsey Center for Business and Environment said those five countries account for up to 60% of plastic waste leaking into oceans. Kat Lumaraos, UNTV News and Rescue. The Philippines will support the proposal to ban a foreign waste importation in the 34th ASEAN Summit. Rosalie Koz is in Bangkok, Thailand to tell us why live. Good evening, Rosalie. Yes, good evening, Alex. The Philippines. The Philippines is willing to support the 10 member association of Southeast Asian nations if the regional organization will push for the banning of foreign waste importation. Trade Secretary Ramon Lopez says the Philippines will give its support if the issue is brought up, especially that recently it has been President Rodrigo Duterte himself who ordered the ban of importation of waste from foreign countries. Let's listen to Secretary Lopez's statement. We also just uh, learned that uh, I think a few weeks ago we have made that announcement. I think government has made that that uh, announcement that uh, we would uh, ban the importation of waste crash into the country so that's a, a unilaterally set policy so if there will be such a move in ASEAN obviously it is something we will support 
The Trade Secretary also supports the proposal to impose stiffer penalties against those who will illegally import waste in the country. Some groups have appealed to the leaders of the ASEAN member states to declare the total ban of trash importation. This is expected to be discussed along with other pressing issues or pressing issues during the 34th ASEAN summit, including the plastic debris in the ocean. Meanwhile, President Duterte is expected to meet with Thai businessmen during the sidelines of the 34th ASEAN summit in Bangkok. No deals are expected to be signed during the meeting, but this aims to further promote foreign investments in the Philippines. As for the Recto Bank incident, Trade Secretary Lopez says that for him, the issue should not be raised during the 34th ASEAN summit since this is an issue between private sectors and the government of the Philippines and China are not involved in this. Offhand, ako kung akatanangin mo ang baka hindi. Kasi hindi involved yung government dun sa accident. Eh, dalawang, ano naman yung private groups naman sila. Hindi naman government. So, kaya siguro may nahon lang dapat tayo dito. Uh, huwag nating i-involve ang mga government. President Duterte is expected to arrive here at Bangkok late tonight and tomorrow he will be attending several meetings for the 34th ASEAN Summit such as meeting with the ASEAN Inter-Parliament Assembly, Business Advisory Council, ASEAN Youth and he will also join the plenary and the gala dinner. President Duterte in his speech prior to his departure to Bangkok said that he will be talking about the West Philippine or South China Sea dispute lengthily in ASEAN Summit. He said he will be asking China if it is correct to declare ownership of ocean. That's the latest here from Bangkok. Back to you, Alex. Thank you, Rosalie Koz, reporting live from Bangkok, Thailand. As the water in Anget Dam drops to almost its critical level, native residents within the dam area complain. They say their livelihood is affected because of the low water level. Joanano tells us why. If residents in Metro Manila are complaining over water service interruptions, native Dumagats and several residents within the Angat Dam area are suffering more as the water in the dam continues to drop, nearly hitting its critical level. From the previous blue-green shade that indicates the depth of water, now the water is color brown and portions of land is visible as the water level in the Angat Dam declines. Nene Avellaneda, a native Dumagat, has to go down to the steep area just to wash their clothes. She says the residents here are having a hard time to wash their clothes because of the situation of the dam. Unang malakap ay tonto, big mataas pa. Kaunting babala ang namin dun sa libis ng bahay namin naglalaba na. Pagkatapos madali kang makauwi sa bahay, maputik. Pagkatapos kami isisilid ko sa sako at da. On the other hand, Nana's daughter Brenda has to pass this steep portion before she could fetch water from the dam. Matarik po yung aming inaahaw na natlol na songan. Noong po ay naano ko yung galon, hinahakot-hakot ko yun po ay mahirap na po. Malayo na yung tubig. Even the fishermen here are also worrying over income loss as there is scarcity of fish. They also have to pay an additional fee to bring their cash up before they could pass it on to sellers. Ngayon lang po namin naranasan yung ganito kawaba ang tubig. Sa ngayon po ma'am ay yung aming pangingis daw ay chimpo-chimpo na lang po. Madali pa itong lumabo ngayon dahil maputik na po yung anggat. Ngayon po ay mahirap tapos delikado rin po yung mga tuod, yung mga ugat ng kahoy na dati. Kaya nag-iingat po kami sa pagsisid. Mahirap nga po kasi mula sa tubig hanggang dito sa pantay, dadalin po ng hahakutin po muna ng tao bago. Tapos pagdating dito, hahakutin ulit ng kulong-kulong pataas. Pwede isang kulong. Kung minsan naman po pang ulam lang yung hinihinihin. Some residents are also complaining since they have to take a long walk just to transport the vegetables they are going to sell in the market. Like Jerry who is residing in the other side of Angat Dam. Dati po, eh, kami dito, yung bangka namin, mas mababa po yung naabot ng, ano, ng bangka namin. Ngayon po, eh, malayo na po yung aming dinadaanan. Mahirap po talaga, lalo po, eh, may mga bata. Naku, eh, ang init po ng nilalakaran namin. As of 6 a.m. today, the water level in the Angat Dam is 160.28 meters compared to the recorded 160.73 meters yesterday. Based on the projection of the National Water Resources Board, the water in the Angat Dam may hit its 160-meter critical level tonight.
As the NWRB coordinates with the Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical and Astronomical Services or PAGASA, Director Servilio David says that significant rainfall in the Angat watershed is expected to happen in July. Uh, base naman po no, sa latest projection ng pag-asa, yung July po magkakaroon ng mga significant rainfall no, sa Angat Watershed. No? Okay. But uh, we are hoping that uh, in July, eh, dumating po ng mas maaga yan para makabalik yung makapag-recharge na yung tubig sa Angat Dam at mag-increase yung level. John Anu, UNTV News and Rescue, Nor Sagaray, Bulacan. The group Bayan Muna seeks another round of rebates for Manila Water customers. Meanwhile, Solon wants the 18th Congress to continue the investigation on the water shortage in the country. Grace Kassin reports why. Residents in several barangays in Madaluyong City continue to experience water supply shortage. They still rely on water rationing to be able to use water in their day-to-day -day activities. Due to this problem, Bayan Muna plans to file another complaint against Manila Water to ask the water concessionaire to implement another rebate for their customers due to the water shortage households have been experiencing. On the other hand, Bago Generacion Party Let's Representative Bernadette Herrera D. says she wants the aid in Congress to continue the investigation on the water supply shortage in the country. The lady lawmaker believes the regulators have either been slow or inept in doing their job. She also plans to file a bill that will prescribe details of the regulatory powers and declare the water concessionaires as public utilities. Before the 70th Congress ends on June 7, Lower House has passed a resolution on how to address the water shortage. The resolution states that cloud seeding should be done regularly. Cross-border sharing, where one water service provider yields to another some volume allocation of water to augment supply to the latter's customers when needed. Recycling of used water, asserting the costs or sources of non-revenue water, and explore new water resources. Grace Cass in UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. According to Pag-asa, the amount of rainfall is still insufficient to boost the water level of the Angat Dam. April Senadoza will tell us why. As the water level of Angat Dam continues to drop, thousands of consumers in some parts of Metro Manila and Cavite will have to endure days of water service interruptions in their areas. While the Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration, or PAGASA, declared the start of the rainy season last week, the agency admits that the amount of rainfall recently is not enough to boost the water level of the Angat Dam. Although tagula na tayo, pero actually ang ating uh, ulan, uh, tubig ulan ay uh, normally ay uh, 50% kasi ng ulan natin ay induced or hatid ng bagyos. Uh, kung bagbabasihan natin ang mga pagulan mga nakaraan ay hindi talaga sapat para mapunan itong ating mga dams. Pag-asa adds, there will be no widespread rains but only localized rain showers for the next 8 days. As of 6 a.m. of June 21, Angat Dam's water level declined to 160.28 meters, 0.45 meters lower than the 160.73 meters recorded on June 20. Based on Pagasa's data, the lowest water level of Angat Dam was 157.56 meters in 2010. The Angat Dam must reach its minimum operating water level of 180 meters. Kung uh, ma-reach natin yung 180, ang kinakailangan na siguro more or less yung bagyo na da dapat na dumaan sa watershed natin ay nasa mga dalawang bagyo para tumaas yung ating ano, antas ng tubig sa agat. Normally, pag, uh, pag may mga heavy to torrential rains tayo, yun talaga ay yung uh, uh, may, may sabi natin yung significant effect sa ating uh, mga dams na mapunan yang dams natin. So maaari yung mangyari lang yun kung may dadaan na sinasabi nating malakas na habagat at uh, may madadaan na malakas na bagyo. Pag-asa also cautions the public that storms are expected to land in the country in the coming months. Sa bagyo, ang asa inaasahan natin ay uh, uh, between uh, 12 to 17 up to November. So half of that maaring mag-cross over land. So ibig sabihin mag-landfall. So malaking bagay yon na uh, makapag uh, 
eh, import tayo ng tubig sa ating mga dams. April Senedoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Earth is not the only place that needs a cleanup because space authorities now are pushing a global action on space junk, saying that this so-called space debris are a great risk to space missions. Mirasola Bugadil will tell us why. Earth is surrounded by a cloud of space debris and this endangers satellites. The so-called space debris has been an issue since the Cold War era space race between the United States and Soviet Union. But in the absence of solutions and with emerging countries like China and India having developed the ability to shoot down satellites, it has only gotten worse. So we have more than 750,000 particles flying around our tiny globe and um, of a size of at least one centimeter and they are endangering satellites. The amount of debris, ranging from dead satellites to specks of paint, is so great that the European Space Agency very frequently has to alter its satellite's course to avoid larger objects. Uh, very frequently, we have even to lift a satellite or go, uh, go to another direction. And that's also for the International Space Station. The International Space Station also has several warnings and sometimes, and you were the director also for the astronauts, sometimes it's so dangerous that the astronauts go into the Soyuz capsule uh, in order, in case an, uh, an impact happens, that they are secured. So it's really a day-to-day -day business. In April 2017, experts on the matter met in Germany for the 7th European Conference on Space Debris and talks addressed acute issues. One of these approaches is the Dutch Orbit Ed, designed to capture an out-of-control satellite and remove it from harm's way. It is being tested using a robot and a satellite model. Another approach is using deployable nets to catch derelict satellites as they tumble in space. Warner said it was necessary to stop polluting and remove all the garbage. Now I can discuss is this debris a German debris or Portuguese debris or Chinese debris. It doesn't matter. We have to get rid of it. Mirasol Abugadil, UNTV News and Rescue. Good evening, uh, Foreign Affairs Secretary Teodoro Loxin Jr. disagrees with proposed joint investigation of the Philippines and China on the Rectobank elision. This despite President Rodrigo Duterte showed openness to it. Rosalie Claus will tell us why. A joint investigation on the Rectobank incident trenches on the sovereignty of the Philippines and China. This is the reason cited by Foreign Affairs Secretary Teddy Loxin on why he disagrees with the proposed joint investigation on the ramming of a Filipino fishing boat by Chinese vessel on June 9, 2019 near the Reed Bank. The Foreign Affairs Secretary said there should be separate investigations by each side and differences should be discussed by the two sides. If both sides are satisfied, each side will issue its conclusions. Secretary Loxin also said DFA will act on his view and Executive Secretary Salvador Medialdea and the palace support him. He added he will only listen to the Department of National Defense and the National Security Advisor because the Recto Bank incident is a matter beyond the scope of civilian agencies. In a press conference, Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Lu Kang said China suggests a joint investigation at an early date so the two sides can exchange respective initial findings. Lu added this is to properly handle the matter through friendly consultations. Meanwhile, presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo said President Rodrigo Duterte welcomes a joint probe on the incident. The official also mentioned the president's desire to resolve the case immediately and that the government awaits the formal communication from the Chinese embassy. On the other hand, Justice Secretary Menardo Guevara leaves the joint investigation issue to the president. It can be recalled that aside from Secretary Panelo, Guevara also suggested to have a joint investigation on the Recto Bank Maritime incident. Guevara said he will let the president decide on the matter and he refuses to comment and respects the opinion of the Secretary of Foreign Affairs. Guevara mentioned yesterday that he will ensure the result of the joint investigation of the two countries will be acceptable. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Bangkok, Thailand.
An opposition group insisted that the Chinese crew should be held liable for endangering the life of the 22 Filipino fishermen who were left abandoned at sea after the Recto Bank ordeal. Nel Maribohok will tell us why. Opposition Coalition Tindig Pilipinas held a rally in Department of Foreign Affairs this morning to call for justice in the ramming incident near the Recta Bank in the West Philippine Sea last June 9. 22 fishermen were left floating at sea by a Chinese vessel but were later rescued by Vietnamese fishermen. According to the group, the incident happened within the exclusive economic zone of the country. Magdalo Representative Gary Alejano insists that the Chinese crew should be held accountable under the Philippine law. Nangyari na ito before na pag may nahuli tayong mga poachers, talagang hinihir natin dito sa Pilipinas. Hindi lamang hinihir, kinukulong natin dito sa Pilipinas. For Senate President Vicente Soto III, it is not appropriate to put the blame on the Chinese government. It's not the government of China who did it. It's a bunch of fishermen. A bunch of uh, perhaps uh, uh, stupid, silly, uh, no compassion at all group of fishermen. So, hindi mo pwedeng sisihin ang isang bansa dahil sa kabulastugan o kagaguhan ng ilang isang dosena o dalawang dosena ng uh, mangingisda. In a Twitter post by DFA Secretary Teddy Loxane Jr., it is clear that the agency will focus on the issue of abandoning the Filipino fishermen, whatever the instances are. Meanwhile, Vice President Lenny Robredo conducted a closed-door meeting with the 22 crew members of FB Gem Ver 1. The meeting was held at the residence of one of the fishermen and owner of the boat. The Vice President's visit comes after boat Captain Junel Insigne retracted his previous statement that the Chinese boat intentionally hit their boat. He changed tune after a closed-door meeting with Agriculture Secretary Manny Pinol on Wednesday. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasay City. New sets of rails for the Metro Rail Transit Line 3 or MRT 3 are set to be delivered to the country next month, the Department of Transportation or DOTR announced Friday. In a post on Facebook, the DOTR said more than 50% of the new train rails are expected to arrive from Japan in July to August. The rails have been inspected by the DOTR MRT3 factory acceptance test team for rails in Fukuoka, Japan. The DOTR earlier said the rehabilitation and maintenance works will be done on MRT3's electromagnetic mechanic rather, all contents, power supply, system, rail tracks, depot equipment, elevators and escalators in all its stations. The 72 light rail vehicles will also be overhauled as part of the project. The repair works are expected to be completed within the first 26 months of the 43-month rehabilitation and maintenance contract. Meanwhile, the Department of Information and Communications Technology Acting Secretary Eliseo Rio Jr. presents the DICT's proposal for an alternative to the automated election system in the coming 2022 national and local elections. Mon Hock Son will tell us why. In response to the order of President Rodrigo Duterte to the Department of Information and Communications Technology or DICT, Secretary Eliseo Rio Jr. recommends to the Commission on Elections or COMELEC an alternative election system for the 2022 elections in the country. Secretary Rio says the vote counting machines are working fine and have no problems but they need to tweak some process to appease the doubt that votes are not counted properly. The DICT presented today different alternatives to make the elections more transparent. And this will be accomplished using a vote tallying machine or VTM. Ito kasing bilis nito nitong VCM, pero and the only difference ay the public. No? Pwede nilang makita yung actual counting ng machine. Aside from the VCM that counts the votes, the VTM will also scan and show to the voters that their ballots have been counted. There are three proposed ballots, the freehand, barcode, and scholastic. The voters will write the names of their chosen candidates in the freehand ballot.
the barcode will use barcode stickers while the scholastic ballot will use shading and markings. At the end of the election day, votes from the VCM and VTM must tally. With this new procedure, the government will save millions in the printing of ballots. Every VTM machine will only cost 50,000 pesos and can be bought and assembled here in the Philippines. To generate the uh, na Filipino na dapat ang gagawa ng ating election. Hindi na tayo dapat mag-depend sa Smartmatic. Hindi natin magawa yung BCM, eh, yung ginawa ng Smartmatic in three years before the 2022. Pero pwede natin lahat ng components na nasa loob ng BCM yan, pwede natin mabili on shelf. Rio said that VTMs can also be used for teleconferencing. Come July 15, the DICT will demonstrate the proposed system with the Commission on Elections and Stakeholders. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. And in other news, the Commission on Elections, or COMELEC, said that the voter registration for the next election is expected to resume on August 1, 2019 and will run until September 30, 2019. Jimenez said approximately 2 million new voters are expected to register in the said period. Comelec data showed there were more than 61 million registered voters in last May 2019 midterm polls. More than 18 million of the said number are from the youth sector or the so-called millennials and Generation Z, born in the mid-90s and early 2000s. The poll body has been urging Filipino voters to go out and exercise their right to suffrage in order to elect honest and deserving officials. The country experiences today the longest day of the year due to summer solstice. Aiko Miguel tells us why. Today is no ordinary day for Filipinos. Because of summer solstice, the country experiences today longer hours of daytime and a shorter nighttime. According to the Space Science and Astronomy Section or SSA of the Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration or PAGASA, this natural phenomenon is called summer solstice. Ang summer solstice, ibig sabihin kasi nito, Ang araw kasi ay uh, nag-move ng 23.5 degrees papuntang north and then uh, 23 degrees papuntang south. Kaya kung 13 hours yung daytime natin, 11 hours lang yung nighttime. But according to Pagasa, this has no effect on the tide or the waves in the seas. Summer solstice has no effect on the emotions of people either. The public may feel a hotter temperature because the sun will set at past 6 in the evening. Yung epekto doon sa tao, yung sa init ng uh, panahon. Kasi di ba mahaba yung araw natin. Yes. So mostly, affected yung temperature natin. During summer solstice, areas in the northern part of the country like Basco, Batanes, and Baguio will experience more than 13 daylight hours. Metro Manila will also experience almost 13 daylight hours and the sun will set at 6.27 p.m. Pagdating naman na, pababa na ulit, sa southern hemisphere naman yung maka-experience na mahaba ng araw during winter solstice. Tayo naman, ah, mahaba naman araw nat ang gabi natin pagka dito sa winter solstice. Mahaba ang araw, may iksi gabi. Pero 12 hours pa rin yung computation mo na. According to the Space Science and Astronomy section of Pagasa, the public should not worry when summer and winter sources occur because it is a natural movement or declination of the sun. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The PBA Board and the PBA Legends Foundation sign an agreement. Meanwhile, the four teams meet again on Sunday as the UNTV Cup PBA Legends face-off semifinals begin. Asher Karapan Jr. tells us why. The UNTV Cup PBA Legends face-off semifinals kicks off on Sunday, June 23. In the first game, he never meets Alaska at 12 p.m., while Purefoods plays San Miguel in the second game at 1.30 p.m. Both San Miguel and Alaska hold a twice-to-beat advantage for being top 1 and 2 in the team standings, respectively. This means that if both teams win on Sunday, they will face each other in the finals on July 8 at the Araneta Coliseum. 
Uh, I just want to invite everyone for the PVA. It's for the UNTV. It's for the the PVA Foundation, the Legends Foundation, and uh, it's something great that uh, Toy Co and all the guys, Alan Kydick, they did something really nice, and I'm glad to be a part of it, so we can give back. Come here and watch po sa UNTV dito sa Caruncho Pasig Sports Center. Thank you, Kuya Daniel. Salamat po sa suporta. God bless you all. Meanwhile, the Philippine Basketball Association Board formally signed yesterday an agreement with the PBA Legends Foundation. Kamu po ay malugod na nagpapasalamat sa PBA kay Commissioner uh, Willie Marshall, kay Mr. Dicky Bachman, at kay Attorney dahil pinayagan niya na kami yung gamitin na ang uh, PBA Legend Foundation. Ibig sabihin yun na Dati yung samahan na mahabang-mahabang pangalan namin ay uh, uh, gagawin na lang namin ng PBA Legend Foundation. At pinayagan na rin kami ng PBA na gamitin yung lumang logo na nung pa yes. naglalaro pa kami. According to the leaders of the PBA, they support the foundation and the legends themselves who have served as the pillar and icons of the basketball in the Philippines. We are basically glad that finally now the we get organized uh, with the PBA Fo Legends Foundation Inc. and hope and moving forward will support the the past P uh, PBA players. Sa PBA naman ay hindi naman sa PBA ito itong PBA Legends sa kanila to. Sino suporta lang namin sila kasi sila din naman ng nagpasikat sa PBA. So suporta po kami. Kung anong kailangan ng PBA Legends, nandito po kami sa Governors. Kung anong kailangan nila, nandito po kami. Uh, mahal po namin itong mga ito. Uh, tinitingala po namin sila. And for their part, the PBA Legends Foundation say they are also ready to help the PBA. Nandito rin po kami para sumuporta rin po. Kung ano po ang mga projects po ng PBA, nandito, nandito rin po ang PBA Legends Foundation Inc. Maraming maraming salamat po. Matagal na namin pinangarap to, individually, pero ngayon lang namin nasaksihan ng mga puti na ang buong natin. Pero ito yung budget ng I believe so, na okay. yung tamang pagkakaisa between the league and the players who represent and are the face of the PBA. Sana masundan pa ng maraming proyekto. The PBA Legends Foundation revealed they have more future projects to raise funds for the sake and welfare of their fellow PBA Legends in need. Uh, I hope na someday we can link also the present PBA players, yung mga present mga active players to, to join and uh, help this, uh, ano, this cause. Uh, kasi in the future, we'll be benefiting from sila dito. So we'll find a way na may hook up sila dito and yun sa mga future projects namin. So thank you again sa support ng lahat para maapuo ito. UNTV Group, Kuya uh, Daniel Mason, and syempre uh, yung mga PBAs. Salamat po. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. Former Department of Foreign Affairs Secretary Albert Del Rosario has been barred from entering Hong Kong after being held in question by immigration officers at the Hong Kong International Airport for several hours. Ferdi Pitalio is in Hong Kong to tell us why live. Yes, uh, Ferdi, uh, good evening. Good evening, William. Del Rosario arrived at Ninoy Aquino International Airport Terminal 3 at 4.59 p.m. following six hours of being held at que and questions and questioned at Hong Kong International Airport by immigration authorities. Clearly, the bottom line is uh, I was being harassed or we were being harassed. And I think the reason might be uh, if you if you follow the trend, the honorable ombudswoman who's here, she went through the same experience. And the link uh, to that experience, which uh, which turned out to be consequential to us, was the was the I communicated. Del Rosario said he he was traveling to Chinese Special Administrative Region. 
uh, first Pacific Board and Shareholders meeting. In our interview with the Philippine Consul in Hong Kong, Paul Saret, he said that immigration authorities did not give a clear reason or elucidation as to why Del Rosario was denied entry. Is this what you want for uh, immigration reasons? Kasi prerogot naman po ng receiving state na ganun lang ang reason. Kahit tayo kung may deny na sa Pilipinas, hindi naman tayo mag-refer kang itigay yung tunay na uh, specific na reason. Meanwhile, Malacanang has raised doubt in intention of the foreign affairs in going to Hong Kong. President Rodrigo Duterte's spokesman and chief legal counsel, Salvador Panelo, expressed curiosity on why does Rosario have, got, have to go to Hong Kong, a special administrative region of China. Panelo said he wants to know if Rosario went to Hong Kong deliberately to experience the same situation that Morales suffered from authorities there. Senate President Vicente Tito Soto III, meanwhile, has questioned Del Rosario's use of diplomatic passport for traveling abroad. Closing on comes, uh, closing on Del Rosario's ordeal at HKIA came barely a month after a similar incident happened to former Ombudsman Conchita Carpio Morales. Last May 21st, Morales went to Hong Kong for a vacation with her family, but immigration authorities there barred her from entering the country for being a security threat. William? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Ferdi Petalio, for that update. Uh, that was Ferdi Petalio live from Hong Kong. And for the news abroad, a U.S. media report says U.S. President Donald Trump approved pre-dawn strikes on Iran but rolled back in the plan. Victor Posada explains why. U.S. President Donald Trump reportedly gave initial approval for the military to launch strikes on Iran in retaliation for Tehran's shooting down of a U.S. drone before pulling back at the last minute. Planes were in the air and ships were in position, but no missiles had been fired when word came to stand down on Thursday night, the New York Times quoted on unnamed official. It was not clear if strikes would go ahead at a later date. The White House and Pentagon have not commented on the reports. The Democratic House Speaker Nancy Pelosi who had attended a classified White House briefing with other congressional leaders, had said the administration should do everything in our power to de-escalate. We know that the high-tension wires are up there, and we must do everything we can not to escalate the situation, uh, but also to make sure that uh, our, our, our personnel in the region are safe. Now, I told the president that these conflicts have a way of escalating. The president may not intend to go to war here, but we're worried that he and the administration may bumble into a war. Trump had earlier appeared keen to calm tensions following the shooting down early on Thursday of a U.S. Global Hawk drone, saying blame might be on a loose and stupid Iranian officer acting without authorization from Tehran. Now, Iran made a big mistake. Uh, this drone was in international waters clearly we have it all documented it's documented scientifically not just words and they made a very bad mistake the downing on thursday of the unarmed aircraft which can fly of altitudes up to 60,000 feet was the latest of a series of incidents that have raised tensions in the Gulf region, a critical artery for global oil supplies. Earlier, a total of six oil tankers were damaged in two separate attacks. Victor Rosare, UNTV News and Rescue. Thousands of people in Hong Kong have surrounded police headquarters calling for an extradition bill to be scrapped. Police have asked the protesters to withdraw peacefully, saying their presence would seriously affect emergency services. Millions of people have marched against the bill in recent weeks with violent clashes breaking out with police. The bill, which allows extradition to mainline China, has already been suspended. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has hailed the country's invincible ties with China during a state visit by President Xi Jinping. Beijing is Pyongyang's closest ally, but their relationship has been strained by North Korea's nuclear program and China's support of UN sanctions. 
Xi and Kim are currently in separate disputes with the U.S., China over trade, and North Korea over nuclear weapons. Meanwhile, fervent Brexit campaigner Boris Johnson and Foreign Minister Jeremy Hunt emerged as the only two candidates left in the race to become British Prime Minister, with the flamboyant Johnson odds-on favorite to win next month. Jovic Burmas will tell us why. Boris Johnson, who has pledged to deliver Brexit on October 31st, edged closer to power on Thursday when he won by far the most support from UK Conservative Party lawmakers in the final round of the contest to replace British Prime Minister Theresa May. Despite a series of scandals in the past and criticism about his attention to detail, Johnson has dominated the race since May announced a month ago that she would step down after failing to get her Brexit deal ratified by Parliament. In the fifth and final ballot of Conservative lawmakers, which eliminated Environment Secretary Michael Gove, Johnson was again way out in front. He won 160 out of 313 votes. Foreign Minister Jeremy Hunt, Britain's current Foreign Secretary, came a distant second with 77 votes and joins Johnson in a runoff decided by 160,000 party members across Britain. Johnson tweeted that he was honored to have gotten more than half the votes cast by party lawmakers. Despite being the underdog Foreign Minister Jeremy Hunt, promised Johnson the fight of his life in the coming weeks. Thank you for coming. Can you hear me? Been the underdog right from the start, and uh, I like to prove people wrong. And the way I'm going to win this race is by showing that the best way to Brexit is by sending the European Union a Prime Minister that they will engage with, a tough negotiator, someone who has a bottom line and won't give up until I get what is right for our country, but also someone who's prepared to walk away. The winner of the runoff, due to be announced the week of 22nd of July, will become the new Conservative leader and the country's next Prime Minister, replacing Theresa May. Both Johnson and Hunt vow they will lead Britain out of the European Union, a challenge that defeated May. She quit as Conservative leader earlier this month after failing to win Parliament's backing for her Brexit deal. Jovic Burma, CNTV News and Rescue, London, United Kingdom. In Russia, a former U.S. Marine held in Russia on suspicion of spying called on U.S. President Donald Trump and the leaders of Britain, Canada and Ireland to help him as he appeared in court at an appeal hearing on Thursday. Paul Wellen, who holds U.S., British, Canadian and Irish passports, was detained in a Moscow hotel room on December 28 and accused of espionage, a charge he denies. If found guilty, he faces up to 20 years in jail. Wellen was in court on Thursday to appeal against the extension of his custody until August 29. The court ruled against him. Meanwhile, Russia has started releasing a group of captive killer whales whose detention in Russia's Far East has caused an international outcry. Russian Deputy Prime Minister Alexei Gordeyev said the whales would be taken back to where they were caught and released within four months. The plight of the 10 captive killer whales, which are being held with 87 beluga whales in cramped conditions in a bay near the port of Nakodka, triggered an international outcry with celebrities such as actor Leonardo DiCaprio joining a petition that raised nearly 1.5 million signatures calling for their return to the ocean. Kat Dumaraos, UNTV News and Rescue. Miniature models representing the sports at next year's Olympic and Paralympic Games in Japan were on display at the capital on Thursday. Meanwhile, the International Olympic Committee unveils a list of refugees who will attempt to make the final cut in the Tokyo Games. Vincent Arboleda will tell us why. 400 days before the summer showpiece begins, 3D printed models which symbolize the 55 sports at the Tokyo 2020 Olympic and Paralympic Games were presented in jars within the Tokyo Chamber of Commerce and Industry on Thursday. On display since March, the models are made using a 3D printer and are aimed at raising awareness of all the sports for Japanese fans. Baseball and softball, karate, skateboarding, surfing and speed climbing 
will all be featured at Tokyo 2020 as organizers target a younger audience. More than 7.5 million people registered for the ID required to make an application. The first lucky fans who earned tickets during the initial lottery found out what events they can go to. Meanwhile, the Tokyo 2020 Olympics refugee team will be bigger than the inaugural 10-member squad in Rio de Janeiro four years ago, the International Olympic Committee said on Thursday. The IOC unveiled a list of 37 refugees who are receiving Olympic scholarships and who will attempt to make the final cut for Japan next year. Among those are the 10 athletes who took part at the Rio Games in 2016. The 37 are refugees from Afghanistan, Cameroon, Democratic Republic of Congo, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Iran, South Sudan, Sudan, and Syria. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue. Um, what we can say One of the wishful five, Kimberly Baluzo, continues to shine brighter. She is set to use her vocal talent in original Filipino music this time around. Mirasol Abogadil will tell us why. Wishers, another BMPI artist is a must watch out for as Kimberly Baluzo of the Wishful Five steps on another level of performance. Kim is set to sing on stage, but this time in the new season of the original Filipino musical entitled Rock of Ages, produced by the Philippine Educational Theatre Association or PETA. Rock of Ages is a story of young Eileen, who dreams of singing her way to fame amid struggles in a flooded area from a catastrophic typhoon with a clear message that love exists even in times of calamities. This season of PETA's hit comedy musical is something special, as Kim has been chosen to play the role of Eileen. Alternating with Asel Santos, Kim Molina, and Shaira Opsima. Kim says this is the first time she will use her vocal prowess in a musical. The Wishcovery Season 1 first runner-up is excited to work with renowned Filipino artists like Noel Cabangon, Bayang Barrios, and Randy Santiago. Oh, nakakasama ko. Napakagaling ni Kim. At uh, you better watch out dahil siyempre yun ang kumbaga uh, alam naman natin kilala na siya pero eh, siyempre malaking bagay din to be part of Rock of Ages. Sobra na-appreciate ko yung mga advices nila and yung mga how they share their experiences before. Ang laging uh, sinasabi lang nila sa akin is just be yourself and wag mong i-pressure masyado yung sarili mo kasi lahat naman is... Uh, uh, kumbaga eh, by the process naman. At nandiyan naman sila yung mga kas para tulungan ako mag-grow. Another Rock of Ages first-timer is a Song of Praise or ASOP year for Best Interpreter, Leia Patricio, who will alternate as Mercy. Bukod po sa pagkanta, gusto ko po matuto ng ibang, ibang rindo naman and um, makakilala ng maraming tao na pwede magturo pa sa akin ng iba pa na mas ma-improve pa po yung uh, and according to Rock of Ages director Maribel Legarda, this is the seventh season. Yet, a lot is in store for those who will watch the smash hit. So we have, of course, our new guest artists. In, when we do rock, uh, all the individual uh, the art artists always find something that they put to the table that is theirs. If you keep on changing the combination of people, there will be something that... Will be different. Among the awards Rock of Ages has garnered is the Outstanding Original Musical and Best Musical Production Awards in 2014. Rock of Ages Season 7 runs from July 5 to September 29, 2019. Mirasol Abugadil, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the reasons behind the news June 21, 2019. On behalf of Alex Baltazar, I am William Theo, and before we close, we will recap with today's significant sound bites. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening.
I think clearly the bottom line is so uh, I was being harassed or we were being harassed. Well, I'm being a specific, but you want to know, or immigration reasons. That's the problem. Namang po ng receiving state na ganon talaga. Kahit tayo kung may hindi na ito, hindi naman tayo magdurpor ng ibigay yung tunay specific na reason. It's not the government of China who did it. Eh. Hindi mo pwedeng sisihin ang isang bansa dahil sa kabulastugan o kagaguhan ng ilang isang dosena o dalawang dosena ng uh, manging isda. Kung uh, ma-reach natin yung 180, ang kinakailangan na siguro more or less yung bagyo na da dapat na dumaan sa watershed natin ay nasa mga dalawang bagyo para tumaas yung ating ano, antas ng tubig sa agad. Matarik po yung aming inaahaw na natlulusungan. Noong po ay naaano kayong galon, hinahakot-hakot kayo ngayon po eh. Mahirap na po. Malayo na yung ano, tubig. The government has made that, that uh, announcement that uh, we would uh, ban the importation of waste crush into the country. So, That's a, a unilaterally set policy. So if there will be such a move in ASEAN, obviously it is something we will support.